Community is a core part of the human experience. However, for many 2S LGBTQIA individuals, finding a place where you can feel safe and supported can seem like a distant dream. Even more so for those who have come from a country or grew up in a place where they felt they couldn't truly be themselves. That's where Out There Winnipeg comes in, a vibrant organization dedicated to connecting queer folk through sports and other engaging activities. Here, friendships blossom, and for some, these connections even lead to finding a life partner. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Thomas, and I've been with Out There since the second year of our existence. We began in 2002 as a recreation and sports opportunity for people in the community to get to know each other and have fun together. And I've been coordinating hiking and charades at one time, badminton and other activities within Out There. Um, hi, my name is Ray. Um, I am actually part of the steering committee. Um, I'm also involved in um, many out there activities like badminton, volleyball, hiking, gamers, boxing. <laughs> all, most of most of most of them. Kind I'm of involved. all of them, really. Very cool. Very cool. Hello, I'm Max, and uh, I'm pretty new compared to Thomas. But I've been with out there for over ten years now, and uh, I was trying. Uh, many groups, hiking, uh, front running, and uh, volleyball. And then I also volunteered a couple of times and it was a uh, great fun. Yeah, I mean, as a queer man myself, looking around for like people to connect with and activities to do, it can really be a challenge out there. I was lucky enough to find a uh, queer speed friending event a uh, couple weeks ago. Oh, no, I can't even remember the organization Winnipeg it was with. Connects. Winnipeg Connects. Thanks. And I've been able to develop a new group of friends thanks to that. But I know for a lot of people, it can be incredibly intimidating, especially for someone who's queer or maybe a little nervous about going out there, not sure how to express themselves. So why don't we go through and talk about why you all wanted to get involved in Out There in Winnipeg? You know, why was it important for you to build this community for yourselves? Actually, uh, before I joined out there, I actually didn't really know that much gay people. Um, I had like one close gay friend, one close lesbian friend, and a lot of acquaintances. I was kind of awkward and have gone through stuff in life. So when I joined out there, it was a chance for me to actually meet a lot of uh, LGBTQ plus people. Um, and the reason why I joined the committee is because I want to help other uh, people in our community uh, meet other people from our community. What about you, Max? Pretty much the same. And I think because I'm a big sports fan, I always love sports, but I'm also feeling, always wanting to find a place like safer just to be myself, which is I identify as uh, one one of the LGBT, LGBT uh, people. So that's why I think when I heard of Rainbow Resource Center and then they refer me to this group and then I joined right away. And I, I just had great experiences and uh, made some really nice friend there like over yeah. the years. So, yeah, I think it's uh, it's a really like a very sweet thing to do. It's always exciting to find someone with a shared experience. And I know like right now, you know, it's, it's very contentious conversations surrounding to us LGBTQ conversations like we've you know, the whole um, parental rights movement and the challenges that we've had for trans individuals. So like, as you're mentioning, safe spaces, it's so so important because I know going through different areas like for myself as both a white man and someone who can be straight passing I could go to a lot of spaces and feel comfortable that other people can't and that's so important to have a, a safe space it feels so different when you go somewhere like going to a party of just like just people but going to a very very specifically like queer parties 
you're like, the queers are here. It's so exciting. It just fe- like the atmosphere feels different. Yes, definitely. And then we can just start with, hey, how uh, did you uh, ever go to Pride? Or how was your Pride mm-hmm. last week? So something like that. So I think it's just more um, relaxing. Well, you feel like you don't have to put on a mask. Exactly. Right? You can just be your authentic self. And I think, you know, we've head out of pride season. A lot of places you see the flags, they're gone. July 1st, they're already gone. So now, you know, it's good to have those spaces and continue to have those conversations and build those friendships and those networks. So, Ray, for yourself, how is out there a safe space? You know, we're talking about safe spaces. How is it safe specifically? How do we make it safe? Uh, well, out there, um, it's just for uh, people in our community and our allies. We often introduce ourselves and our, our pronouns. Uh, we we just let people be who they are and like dress how they want. And When you're going to hang out with people through these different activities, you know, what is that or what is that like thing that you're like, yes, this this feels right, this feels safe, like you feel comfortable in order to build those potential friendships. Well, I think like knowing that they're part of our community makes me feel more safe, if that makes sense. Like I I feel like I can be myself and I can, like just spaces like just like gay bars and stuff, I, I feel like I can, like for example, like dance like how I want to dance. When I go to a straight bar, I kind of, I feel more reserved and I can, I feel like I, I, I can actually go to the gay bar by myself. And be okay, but like, I feel very awkward um, being in the like, street by myself. I mean, we just heard about an attack on uh, two women out in Halifax, uh, attacked by a bunch of men. Like, it's it feels like you know, twenty twenty four that we should be way way past these sorts of situations, but it still happens. People can feel unsafe, and for people, especially newcomers coming from uh, different countries where. It's even further back in terms of uh, queer and 2S LGBTQ rights coming here. There might be hesitancy to come out, to be themselves, to experience those situations, especially if we're hearing stories like that. And I feel like it's such a disservice to what Canada is, right? Like, it's meant to be a place. And of course, Canada has a dark history and there's still dark elements to it. But I think opportunities like out there, Winnipeg, are a chance to change that dialogue to open those conversations. Oh, what what do you two think? It's very sad to have the news. Nowadays, I mean, like the mo- modern society we are having right now. But a uh, good thing is that's one set news, but we also have a lot of good news happening, like during Pride Week. And I actually just um, came back from a, a trip, uh, a Toronto Pride, and also Boston. So um, I feel like people are uh, more aware of this m- group and then people are showing more respect because of we have very good, let's say it's um, marketing or just <laughs> just just trying to get people know more. Great branding. Yes, and then through pride and then through all kinds of activities like out there. So more people know and then more people, I hope they don't treat us minorities. We just want to be like everybody else. It's yeah. just like us. You don't want to be like, othered, right? right? Like for someone who's a newcomer, you might be a visible minority, which is a challenge. I know my uh, partner, my girlfriend, you know, she's lived here her whole life. And there's still times where she gets conversations where it's like, oh, do you speak English? And it's like, well, that's frustrating in itself, let alone being a member of a sexual minority as well. Same. Yeah. Same, same. We have to acknowledge like people from all over the world, they come to Canada and then they will bring what they have learned before. So here is a place like we are welcoming all kinds of culture, uh, like all the good stuff. But at the same time, we're just trying to be like more understanding. People are different and uh, respecting. Like we're just trying to create a world like uh, harmony. Like people are happy, not not hurting anyone from any as- uh, aspect. Exactly. It's and like having those opportunities to connect. Like there's that sharing of culture, learning from different people. It's like oh, get to experience other people's languages. Uh, maybe even food. When you have those friendships and those opportunities, they get to learn from you. 
and you get to learn about the different queer experiences that they have. Like it's so for me, it's so fun to hear about people's experiences, them learning about themselves and to share. It's like, wow, that's amazing. That's fantastic. I, I, I'm so excited that you're here to celebrate and be open with me. If I may add something, two things about safety out there is not not just a sports group. We have a lot of recreation things as well. But for those of us who are queer, uh, especially guys, a lot of us when we were young, even not so young, doing sports, it's just a reality for a lot of us. We were not good at it. And we would back away or we would be made fun of. And I, I didn't do sports when I was young. And when I came out there, I tried some sports that I hadn't done. And I was just as bad and hopeless as I was <laughs> when I was young. But no one laughed. No one said, you can't play. No one looked down at me. It was just, oh, we're here to have fun together. And that wasn't, that's an important piece of safety, that you are welcome even if you're just learning, even if you're not really good at this activity, we're here to make friends. The other piece around safety, we've had a number of people come to us over the years, and especially more recently, people who have, maybe they've just moved from Winnipeg from another part of Canada. They're, they're having trouble making friends. And they come to out there, they start to make some friends. People coming from, and I'm sure that Max and Raymond will have much more to say, coming from other cultural backgrounds, they may be still totally closeted to their family and really coming in afraid, just afraid even to be among a group of gay people. But we've all been there. At some time, we've all been afraid to come out to our families. And so we can support their need for privacy, their need for confidentiality, their their need to simply be held and not judged and not pushed just to be to be who they are. Sometimes people come they they might even be still married or they've just come out of a marriage, their children don't know. There's many, many times when we just have to s support people and provide that kind of a safe circle where there's no judgment and not too many questions. Yeah, just a place to be and explore who you are. And I think that kind of ties into the accessibility well. Like there's a lot of activities and things that can feel whether like when we're looking at sports and activities, sometimes the price of entry it's astronomical, like getting into different leagues and things can feel impossible sometimes. So things like this is a great opportunity for people to get out there. Uh, how about we go through some of the different activities and things like, uh, Raymond, you were talking about like, you know, there's various different sports. You mentioned boxing, gamers and things. Uh, let's go through that list. What is available? And when we're talking about the accessibility, is there a cost associated with these or is it just open where people can come and try something out? Well, I guess it depends on the activity. Um, some of them are free and some of them cost more than the others. <laughs> uh, like, for we have like really good prices though. For for example, volleyball at badminton, we have, it's like a $20 seasonal pass. Okay, so that's already much better than some of the leagues I've seen. Because, uh, for example, other drop-ins are like $5 per drop-in, um, but it's $20 for the whole season for from October to June. So that's pretty cheap. We have we do have like walking groups that are free. Like urban hikes, if you don't drive to the place to the hiking places, uh, we if someone drives you, we just have to give them money for gas. Oh, and so just like a carpool sort of like, situation. Yeah, carpool. There's different types of activities. There's like seasonal activities, and there's there's some that they're year round. Uh, for example, uh, volleyball and badminton are more fall winter sports. Um, hiking is more summer sports, like uh, running is more summer. We do have like a foodies group. It depends on like we, they, uh, the the volunteer coordinators choose the, the group that or the restaurant and they'll send out a mass email. And if you are interested, they invite you to look at the, the website of the restaurant so you can see the prices. So if you find it affordable or not, or if you want to try it. Running is free. Walking is free. Almost free. We asked for a small donation. Because we are, we have no grants. We are totally um, participants. So that's to cover like administrative costs mm -hmm. and things like Our that. Our website. Okay. So there's a ton of different options of varying levels of cost. Like some of the leagues cost a little bit of money. Other things are more open like walking, running, those sorts of events. 
I mean, that's really exciting, giving those various different options and a chance for people like you were talking about, Thomas, that, you know, you might be a little nervous to try out an activity, maybe something you've never tried before or you were never good in the first place. That chance to just try it, no judgment. I honestly am not good at sports <laughs> and I got a little better, but I still am pretty bad at sports. So I just like to have fun and I try to have a space where as Thomas said, if they're if they're beginners, I try to make them f still feel welcome and make sure that they don't feel bad when they mess up. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't think we have a like a level. It's just like beginners. So everyone is welcome. And then if you're really interested in any of the sports and uh, just come along and then there are people like a really um, willing to uh, just show you around and then teach you from like scratch. I think it, the, the good thing about those group is like what Thomas uh, mentioned is uh, basically is a great opportunity to, to social. And then especially with uh, LGBT people, like it's, it's a safe place. You come out and then you talk, you share your stories, you will find so many people are having a rapport with you. And then they, they, some of them have the same experiences with you. And then you really can just form really solid friendship this is a starting point and then you go to one of the group and then you uh you know somebody and then you can grab a, a coffee and then every, everything starts there it's a start to something that could become more like lifelong friendships potentially yes right yes i just want to be clear that it's not all people some some people are good at their the sports um are competitive uh for me i'm competitive but i the, the issue is i i'm not good at sports but I, I still like to um, I, I, I like to talk shit because I'm not sure if, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's allowed. But uh, I like to talk shit just for fun. Um, and I mean, just be whatever. Yeah, you like want everyone to. knows it's it's just for fun. Like they all know I'm joking. But I just think I think it, the competitiveness kind of makes it more fun. So there's like a variety of different levels and like skill levels. So like for people who are more competitive or more um, involved in sports outside, like you know there are people who can like like all right, these people at this level, you know, they're going to go hard. And then you have people that are like, hey, let's learn, kind of get experience, test those waters a little bit. So, like, it's 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 available to all to, like, try different areas, different levels. And every time you're meeting new people. So it's not exactly the same the old group, but every time there are something uh, new surprise, so, which is also nice. So, for example, uh, in volleyball, uh, we all played together at the beginning, and then we split off into a competitive uh, side and a non-competitive side and then for depending on the, the pace and how like seasoned you are like there's different kind of they split up to groups depending on fa how fast you are you know when we're talking about these conversations trying to make spaces more safe how, how can we do that how do we ensure like places not just at out there winnipeg but just society as a whole just based on your opinions and thoughts how can we continue to make it more comfortable to avoid situations like that where people feel othered, um, not accepted, even within certain circles. This is still a challenge, and I hope that Max and Raymond will respond to, but even a, in an activity not very long ago, I, uh, we were going out, we were carpooling, and I had assumed that one of the participants was female identifying, but they weren't, and, and I forgot even to ask before we started pronouns. And that person was hurt that I had assumed and that I assumed that this person would want to go with an exclusive group of females. They, that's that they had gone far beyond that already. So even for out there, it's still a challenge. That we we have to get used to pronouns. We have to get the whole question of being of of accepting um, non-binary is still new for a lot of queer people and people that dress in a very um, gender ambiguous way, which is great and legitimate. And I'm, I'm glad they're being themselves. I'm glad we can offer a space where we can do that. But even with for us, we have to keep educating ourselves around, around the differences that there could be. And especially, I think, around people's pronouns and how they want to be identified. Well, the conversation around 2SLGBTQ+, has gone a long way. 
just that the the letters and things that we're accommodating within the queer umbrella has changed so much. It was just LGB or just LG LGBT, and it's evolved so much over the time as we've people have had opportunities to explore who they are, and just as like language and science and understanding has evolved as well. I think it's so exciting, but yeah, it can be hard sometimes to keep up with things changing and taking those opportunities to learn. I don't think we did that today. My name is Ryan Funk, pronouns he, him. It's hard. It's like it's something to learn and that something doesn't really happen in at least me growing up wasn't really a common thing to be like, oh, here are my pronouns. Like with the friends I grow up with, you know, it just over time you learn each other's pronouns, how to address them. But yeah, you're right. In terms of meeting people in a new space, you got to be accommodating. You have to be open and be able to allow them to express themselves and to feel safe. Exactly. Like the um, the rainbow flag is has evolving for generations. Like there are a couple of versions already. Well, yeah, there's like the progress flag and even the progress fr uh, flag has changed. There's like one for Manitoba that includes like indigenous folk as well. Even for me, each year, like before Pride, I would just go online just to revisit all those knowledges. So what's the uh, colors and all those symbols, all those triangles, what does that do? What does those mean? Uh, so same thing, I guess, ideally to me, it's getting, it's getting complex. Ideally for me is um, uh, the simple, the better, because eventually we're all humans, well, as long as we have love and we're accepting whoever ne sitting next to you is. Like maybe in the future, like we're just like, what's your lovers or who is your partners? Like that's that kind of like a mutual. Well, that's like the uh, gender abolition kind of conversation that, that goes around of like, you know, trying to get rid of gender norms and just address people as people like you don't necessarily need. The, I mean, we're nowhere <laughs> near a society where we're there, but, you know, it's about being accommodating, taking those times. And I think it's important that, you know, there are a lot of flags and there's a lot of different identities, uh, experiences, orientations. Um, and it's OK to get things wrong sometimes. I know I've been wrong about people's pronouns before. I've accidentally misgendered people that I'm, I'm close to, and it's like, oh, I'm sorry. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard, but it's about taking those times and learning. Here's a funny story about me. When I first came here, like, 10 years ago, and I, the only word I know is gay about queer people. So I thought, and, and then I learned, like, transgender so i thought okay if i'm a girl like girls um i must be trans my gender trans so I, I i just assume i am the transgender not until somebody pointed out okay i think you're not like you're 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 like girls you're probably uh, lesbian and then that's where i learned the the word I don't know. I just know gay. I just know I'm different. I'm not heterosexual. So, <laughs> so that's <laughs> that's really funny. I always talk talk to my friend about that. It's just it's a learning process. Well, especially for everyone. like if you don't even speak English or are learning English, like trying to not only navigate that field of trying to adjust to a new society, but also learn additional language that is not necessarily within the cultural zeitgeist of the average population it's like a brand new um brand new eras for eras for me when i started so yeah i guess i've learned so much and i feel like more confident over the years that i can just speak out of myself and then i can just hunt some like rainbow flags or on my car or somewhere just to give people a hint like I'm part of the community so and also I'm like from my background I I I, I came I uh, came from China so I know like China is more closet closet all it's like not, not that open as Canada so I feel confident to be out there and then to to let people know like here I'm okay. Like I, I'm totally happy to 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 be. Well, then you showcase you're someone who's 
safe to connect to for someone who's like, mm, I'm new here. I'm still a little nervous because of experiences I had back home or like even someone who's living here their whole life. Myself grew up in a conservative community, didn't feel safe to come out, felt bad to come out and be who you are. So seeing people be out like to look queer or to have flags and things identifies them as someone safe that you're like, hey, maybe I can talk with this person. Maybe I can find a connection. <laughs> exactly. When I see something uh, rainbow, I just follow those things. Sometimes <laughs> I just, okay, oh, there's follow a rainbow. Follow the rainbow, yeah. bra- the rainbow brick road. <laughs> just, just you have, you have a, you have an urge just to say hi and then to introduce yourself. Like, it's like finding a friend, a family member, so, something like that. Like, it's really nice feeling. So that's why I'm trying to just, uh, um, decorate myself more with some rainbows while awesome. I'm outside. What do you think has been your most fulfilling experience being at Out There Winnipeg? For me, it's just meeting new people. Uh, well, meeting new people who would have who have shared interests. Like I love playing volleyball and people there are also part of the, uh, the community. So it's just nice having both of them and f- like a feeling like I can be myself. Yeah, it's just it's just nice place, <laughs> some, somewhere to go. <laughs> same, same. I feel like uh, it's always like you open a, a gift when you go to those activities, no matter which ones, and then you um, you meet people from different culture background. They will introduce the great food, and then they will tell their stories, and then you, it it's like oh, I there's more things I can try. Like each time you 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 take home something to make your life more colorful, I would say. So I love that part. It's because I'm a curious person. I always want to learn. For me, I'm, I'm older than Max and, and Raymond, but growing up, I always thought I was the only one. Or I knew there were other gay people, but I had no idea who they are. And it was so lonely and very alienating to always have to be adapting, adapting, adapting to the to the straight community. And finally, to be able at least a couple of times a week be with my people where I can be myself. Even to say, I, I'm so happy when I can just say my pronouns, I, you can, either he or they, because the non-binary or more female part of me when I was young it was beaten out of me but you know on the playground or in the hallways of the school or it I was made to be ashamed of it and now to say I'm so happy to say this part of me I can celebrate it because there's people around me who who are not not afraid or ashamed to be who they are Exactly, right? You're like, you're finding extended families. I remember me and Thomas spent some Christmas dinner together and Thomas was really kind to just invite it for Christmas. This is just for family. And I also had other like uh, holiday dinners with my other friends from the community. And then we just go and had a nice uh, dinner and then party nights and then karaoke, those things. Yeah, it's about investing time in people that make you feel good. Yeah, exactly. Feel normal to start with. (laughs) (laughs) And the other very important part is you can just share whatever you want because sometimes we were treated badly. So this this is a place like you can really just see whatever you want. And people usually just won't judge and just be a good listeners and then and if if i could say that in out there we're trying to develop more the the non-sports recreational aspects like you just mentioned karaoke I, I why don't we have a karaoke group yet maybe someone will step up and that's how we actually how every out there group is formed someone says i would like to do karaoke with other people i would like to go hiking that's how i got involved okay so it's about getting people. community uh, engagement and community yeah. initiative. So someone just says, "Can you give us a, give me a little bit of support, and I will organize this group." And that's how it gets going. And then uh, I, I remember I used to go running with my friend, my friend Wally, and I. We were two, but now there's on a Saturday morning there's fifteen or twenty 
but it took one person to say, I'm going to do this and invite some others along. So it doesn't have to be a sports group. It can be anything that's that's social where people can make friends and have fun together. So if someone is hearing this conversation and is thinking, hey, this out there Winnipeg thing seems pretty neat. How do I get involved? Well, you can go to our website, um, out there, winnipeg.ca. Um, you can subscribe to all of the activities, sports, recreational activities that you are interested in, and you will get an email uh, when that is happening. Um, again, some of them are seasonal, so um, some of them will be starting in like October or starting. So you're saying I can't go skiing in the middle of summer? <laughs> no. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> but there's also a Facebook group for outdoor volleyball. We have a social media um account and Facebook account for Outdoor Winnipeg. You can join that to to see any um, updates about any um, activities. Yeah, we have the website. It's really easy. Just put out there winnipeg.ca. And then when you're um, actually on the page, you will find 17 sports there. And then there will be a subscription. You just put your email inside. It just, it just uh, check the things you're interested in. You will get notified when there is uh, activity coming. And then I would just encourage everybody to go and check it. I think the hard part was probably, will probably be showing up to one of the activities. But if anyone out there does want to go to one of those groups and they're nervous or scared, um, they can reach out to the committee and we can find someone to uh, buddy up with them or support them. I, I, I'm willing to do that, Ashley, also. If anyone out there is wants to go to an activity, I'll go with them. Just And uh, I'll tr try to introduce you to people, but I'm also a little awkward, so <laughs> <laughs> I can't help you fully, but I will try my best to... So there are opportun opportunities and options for people to try to, like, if they're a little nervous, you know, there's potential buddies or things that can happen. But, I mean, there's the chance to meet a new friend there. Like, I think that's a really exciting element. Some people have found their life partner. That's amazing. There you go. I mean, we all know how difficult dating is. So <laughs> there you go. Another option. At least you know somebody with the uh, same interests. So you you, all, <laughs> you, you all love like hockey or you all, you all play ping pong. And then that's at least you get a, a really nice start. <laughs> Have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight? Leave a comment on our social media or reach out to us on our website. I'm Ryan Funk. This was You Talk. And have yourself a good one.